and I'll just shoot above the mic. Okay? For the last 20 years, I've worked as a photojournalist. My camera has taken me across the United States and the globe, telling stories of politics, civil unrest, war, conflict, revolutions. But what drives me most is telling the story about people. When Duolingo first reached out to me about this project, it kind of all began with the story of a couple of users and the idea that there were people out there using the app to better their lives, particularly under very difficult circumstances. We're trying to highlight, uh, one, the essential truth and value of learning a language, but trying to show how, uh, how language learning is different depending on what lens you have. We're trying to share their story of, of their challenge. I'm excited about the journey. I don't have any expectations other than going out and hearing their stories and being able to document them and bring them back. Get there Saturday. We have interviews lined up from the get-go straight through. To safe travels, beautiful light, beautiful people, to getting a chance to hear all these stories and to safe journeys home. Yes, you're here. Ooh. You're here. Yeah. Oh, from the pig. What's in the whiskey? Yeah. I'm a... I am driving a <laughs> It's fine, it's just a, a swig. swig. Just a swig. You know, the idea that language opens doors and creates opportunity and gives people hope is something that's really fascinating. I'm excited to finally pull the cameras out tonight, get them set up, mm -hmm. figure out what gear we're going to need to take, and and just start working. Can I come home? Okay, so when I arrived to Turkey, the first word I learned is water. I was very thirsty and I wanted some water. In Arabic, when you say sharab, it means anything to drink. So I told him sharab, sharab, <laughs> and he said, oh, sharab, and he went to like a place yeah. and he brought me some beer and he told me, sharab, and I said, hi. I didn't know to, how to say hi here, actually, so I said, mm, mm. <laughs> shut up, shut up. <laughs> then he understood. He said, Sue, Sue. And I said, sure. Sue, Sue. <laughs> and it was water. It was the first word I learned. It was funny. Just so I understand a little bit about when you, when you left Syria, mm. what, what, was, what was it like there? The war started, it wasn't a war, it was like an uprising. The people got tired of the Assad and his family because they want to rule Syria for hundreds of, hundreds of years. The people started to, to demonstrate against the regime. Oh, and the things went very fast after that. You can't imagine like things, new things every day happens. Mm -hmm. 
I got arrested in one of the uprisings, uh, one of the demonstrations. I got arrested for two weeks. But I said, okay, I can continue my life. So I stayed there. But after that, after two years, I got arrested again for one year. My family didn't knew anything about me. They thought like, he's dead. Because they can't talk to you. They can't ask about you. Nothing, nothing. I didn't see the sun for one year. I didn't see the sky for one year. I was under the, gr the ground. I was in a grave. Oh. We were not allowed to speak. We were not allowed to sleep. We were not allowed to do anything. We were 50 people in a room like this, like three meters, three meters, 50 people. We were sitting like this for one year, like this. We sleep like this, we eat like this. We do everything like this. It's like, oh, you can't imagine it. After that, I just escaped to Lebanon. I stayed there for two days, then I came to Turkey. So this is where I live now. I'm in Turkey. I must learn Turkish. If you want to make real friends, if you want to have very deep relationships, you, you need to learn. for one of the employees. Do you uh, stay in touch with the people you can? The alive people. This is my neighbor. He fled the country to a safer place in Lebanon. He died there. And here we are, the Godfather family. <laughs> this friend also died two months ago. And he was my best friend. And he just disappeared. We don't have the body of him. They couldn't find him. Well, yeah. 19, 35, and here he is 50, I think. And your father passed when? In 2010. His He's lucky because he didn't see anything about the war. Actually, I, I, don't, I can't say I'm, I'm happy, but there is something you feel like I'm happy for him because he didn't see what happened. If he would stay alive, I would be a rebel, for sure. Because there is a man to stay with the family, do you know? I wouldn't come to Turkey. I would fight with the people. We got there, he's like, what's my story? I don't have a story, you know? And you're like, Kuh. after you hear it, you're like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. How do you feel like your story isn't important to the world? Just incredible.
We are sadly witnessing another suspected chemical attack in Syria. The death toll in Duma could increase, perhaps even dramatically, in the next few hours. Or now, the U.S. has condemned the apparent chemical attack. This is not the first uh, accusation and denial of use of chemical weapons, and of course, part of the broader uh, civil war that's been going on there for, for years, and hundreds of thousands of people killed. The first day I left Syria, it was my plan was just to stay a couple months, maximum three months, and return back. But the things get more complicated day by day, and uh, at certain stage, it was impossible to, to return to my home city. every day, every night, to hear the pumping, fighting, clashes, it's okay. It's, it become a normal routine life. And sometimes, while I'm sleeping, I feel like uh, the home completely moving. Even the, the battle itself or the fighting is not just close to my home. It was uh, maybe 10 kilometers or 15 kilometers from my home. So I, I couldn't imagine the people who are under shelling, how they are feeling. I'm five kilometers or 10 kilometers from the fighting, and I feel uh, scary. The last job I hold in Syria, it was a construction of a uh, multi-story tower. It was uh, a remarkable day when I left that project for the last time. Uh, I was busy in some inspection work, the guard just jumped in and said, leave immediately now. Nothing strange, why I should leave now? I'm working, I'm busy, just go, forget me. He said, no, I expect very uh, something very serious will happen soon, so better to leave. I spent five minutes, then I pick my papers, uh, my personal stuff, take my car and uh, drive back to home. And really, after five minutes, it start a big battle at that specific point. And that was the last time I visited that side office. Big clash around the office where I work. So if I spent <laughs> maybe 30 minutes more, I'm not sure if I could make it home back. But I left everything behind. I left memories, I left my assets, I left my money, I left everything. I left my family member, which is more important, and left. But there was no option. Staying, it's mean risking my life and risking my family. When I came here, I came with a very basic stuff. So our main clothes and some some essential things. So we needed every single uh, tennis we have, but the only barrier was the language. But it worked for me at that time to spend all the cash I have to learn a language, to be part of the society, uh, not to be isolated, uh, to be get a better living condition, to communicate with the surrounding people. What I wish for my kids, to have a more stable life. Uh, the life they plan it, not somebody else plan it for them. Any next moment will be our choice, not others' choice. You know, there's 
just a chemical attack in Syria. And, you know, what was it? Over 100 people, 40 people or, or so were killed in the chemical attack. Uh, there were other people killed around outside. Um, it's just awful. It's awful when you, it's easy to separate that and think that this isn't, this isn't, it doesn't matter to you or you just, you're, you're so inundated with news of death and destruction and war and conflict that you stop realizing that these are real lives, these are real children, these are families just completely destroyed Yeah, by like, a simple act. You, you hear that stuff and you, you look at like Lean and you look at Anna and you look at, what is it, is it, it Zay? Could, it could have been any one of them. Very well. Yeah. It could have been any one of them. And except for, you know, a few small opportunities that, that allowed them to not be there in those moments. So these are real lives that are being destroyed and that's, it was very timely today to go spend time with his family when this news has broke yeah. that this incident happened. Okay. And we move again. <laughs> Off to a busy day too. Flying to Istanbul. Well, we're set up for her tomorrow night, eight o'clock. Oh. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> when we arrived in Turkey, we didn't have an interview set up with Noor. Now, I think it was important we found her because she was, she was where this all began. Hello? Hey. Uh, yeah, we're on the street. We're in front of the park. Um, we we have like, we're a group of three right now. We're just walking um, up from, from the bottom of the street. <laughs> Hi, how are you? <laughs> Sorry. I was born in Syria and I spent almost all my lifetime there, but my nationality is Iraqi. Uh, but you know, since I, I was born there and uh, all my friends there, I know the streets, I know everywhere, so I feel that I belong to Syria. It was 2013. Uh, we were move, uh, returning back to home, me and my sister, we were buying uh, food and suddenly some, uh, it was, we were living in a very quiet place. Uh, one man on the street and uh, a lot of children were moving around told us that there is a bomb in the car. Actually, we would not believe it because, uh, yeah, you can't believe it when it's come to you, you can't believe it. It was uh, the car near the building, so we ran home to tell uh, uh, my family to my mother but we, actually until that moment we did not believe we arrive home we tell my mother they are saying that there is explosion and oh. that it was the moment where everything around us explodes we could not hear uh, the the glass fall it was very terrible after that uh, fighting started
my brother had a car and uh, we went out quickly we found uh, you know there is uh, in every fight there is two two sides so um how can i say it it was called at that time the uh, the free army and they were fighting uh, against the regime so everything started at that moment uh, a lot of armed people suddenly arise from nowhere we don't know what is going on you know this is war so it's not like a gun they start uh, shooting uh, through helicopters yani different we we were confused we didn't know whether we had to stay home is it safe or we had to go out is very dangerous then we decided to go out uh, the the car was uh, damaged by the convert but uh, we could escape in america uh, my my brother were driving very fast we were rooting our heads and we were shouting we don't know what to know and at that moment i felt that we are dying no way no way out but uh, thanks god we survived And after that time, we could not return back home. We lived in Syria and uh, different places, but we could not return home. Till this moment, we can't return home because the place is not safe. And since then, we start uh, the trip of Mugi from one place to another. What is the And the options were very limited, you know. <laughs> uh, our nationalities, our passport is not accepted in most of the countries. Uh, the only option that was available at that time was to Iraq, in Baghdad. And later we realized that uh, we moved from bad to worse. <laughs> Because, uh, you know, Iraq is not stable, there is a lot of explosions, it's not safe, there is no services. So we decided to go out of Iraq because we could not feel that anymore. To, to, to feel that fear all the time. We, we ran out from Syria and we found something uh, worse. Uh, there was an option, because some of my families is living right now in Dubai, we decided to go there. And since uh, I'm a professional software engineer, so I have uh, great perspectives of getting uh, good offers. And that's exactly what happened. I started the work, but uh, we were surprised that the uh, permission was rejected. So it, was, uh, it was rejected because of my nationality. Uh, you know, political circumstances always govern our lives. I did not want to return back to Iraq and it was impossible to return to Syria. So we were thinking and, and suddenly came to my mind Turkey. and their culture is very similar to others so you don't feel that you feel something like home it's okay it's not home but something like home that's your father yeah and this is uh, in a castle in syria so it was a real adventure because uh, when we came here uh, the communication was the main concern we can communicate with any uh, with anybody here in turkey except in turkish language so i decided to learn the language that you can't know others lectures, others uh, habits, if you don't know their language. President Trump ordering strikes on Syria. Airstrikes lighting up the Syrian sky. American, British and French warships and planes launching dozens of missiles targeting Syria.
and marks the biggest intervention by Western powers against Assad's government. You moved around 29 times in a period of one year. Yes. 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 بعد ثلاث أيام قررنا إنه نجاه الوضع. إحنا أول دخولنا كان لهنا على الزاتر رحنا على مخيم الزاتري. قعدنا فيه ثلاث أيام. بعدها طلعنا على محافظة دربت. جلسنا فيها لمدة سنة. بعد ما خلصنا قررنا إنه نجاه المخيم بسبب الظروف المادية. الحياة كانت صعبة كثير يعني. ما كنت يعني واعي كثير تقريبا. فكنت أشوف الظروف الصعبة لما يعني عشنا برا كانت علينا ظروف قاسية. It was a difficult life for him. دخلنا المخيم فأبي صار يشتغل وإحنا قررنا إنه ندرس. فبرا ما كنا ندرس كنا نشتغل. بعدين لما شفت البرامج هون فقررت اني ارجع على المدرسة وكمل دراستي يعني. في اخذت انا من اول ما دخلت المنشات لايكس ديز ودلين بالمستوى الرابع. حلمك حلم اني اكمل دراستي. أنا بحب أكثر شيء اللغة الإنجليزية ولغة الحاسب. فحابب لما إيش حابب؟ حابب أدخل إن شاء الله برمجيات. برمجيات وكمل لغة الإنجليزية قوية أطورها. What is it about you inside that you won't give up? يعني تعرف أنت كثير ناس تتحطم معنوياتها بسبب الحرب. الناس بتستسلم بقول لك خلص انا بدي اشتغل بطلت الدراسه ديام يعرفوا عني انه انا ما استسلمت ابدا مع الظروف الحرب هاي اللي احنا فيها انا حبيت اتعلم عشان الظروف عشان الحياه نستمر يعني او انه انا بنصح الناس كلها انه تكمل دراستها وانه يعني تعرف انت بالعيله عندنا بسوريا الواحد متعلم بنجي العيكة كثير طموحين من الشباب السوري يحبوا الدراسة كثير يعني وحبوا انهم يرسموا مستقبلهم بايدهم ويعني My previous job was uh, in the private sector uh, and mainly was focusing on construction. Uh, I like construction, I like engineering work, but at certain stage you're just dealing with a stone, concrete, reinforcement parts, steel parts. So a lot of solid things uh, 
But dealing with IBDs, uh, the internally displaced people who are forced to move their place within the country, uh, it's, a, it's not only about the dealing with the solids, you are dealing with the human beings. But my story is very easy comparing to other people. This story is a piece of cake, comparing to other people. I have all my family members, but other people lost them, all of them. They, they left their towns, uh, their villages 100% destroyed, and they ran away to find uh, a safe corner near the, near the border. In our time in Turkey and Jordan, we interviewed well over a dozen people. But these four people had a commonality amongst them. Their journeys were focused around language, and language was the barrier they all had to break. It was at the beginning something like a disaster. You can't communicate with others. If you need something, we need always someone to come with you, to help you. When you learn a language, you you are not talking to a book, you are talking to people, like flesh and blood, souls around you. For my kids, it's uh, education. They want to continue education. Without education, uh, they couldn't continue uh, their normal life. But again, language is a barrier. <laughs> You can survive with languages. <laughs> you <laughs> <laughs> okay, she's <camera> <laughs> my mind but if you speak in the same language that I speak then your speech will reach my heart That was great. No, no, it was great. It's going to definitely make the, the final cut. <laughs>